And Cheryl, you said, you know, her crusade is on time. That's, I, I, she was actually a little, she was early. A little early. Early. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The country just now yeah. is like, okay, let's, let's fix some things. Maya been right. doing years ago. The WNBA has an undeniable place in the history of sports glory and activism. However, the best women's professional basketball league in the world still fights for the attention, popularity, and respect they deserve. Now, some of the resistance is twofold. The majority of those women are black, putting the league at the crossroads of combating both sexism and racism. Let's keep it real. WNBA players have put their money where their mouth is and once again stand at the front lines fighting for justice and equality. I am here with three esteemed women, excellent hoopers and athletes. Um, I have three-time Olympic gold medalist, four-time WNBA champion with the Houston Comets, Cheryl Swoops. Now we take it to another excellent woman herself. We have two-time Olympic gold medalist, five-time WNBA All-Star, newly of the Las Vegas Aces. Angel McCautry is here as well. What's up, Angel? And finally, one of the up-and-coming young stars of the league, uh, 2018 first-round draft pick, Lexi Brown of the Minnesota Lynx is with us. How did ball affect the trajectory of your life? I'll start with you, Cheryl. Mm. For me, you know, when, when I think about my journey and, and where basketball started, I started playing when I was seven years old. And I, I think I knew for me at a very early age, basketball would would be my, my ticket um, to not only change my life, but change my family's life. And um, never did I realize just how much it would change my life. And I don't just mean um, the things it did for me on the court. Um, I mean, just doors that it opened for me, which allowed me to open doors for, for Angel, for Lexi, and for everyone who, who came after me. But I don't think we talk about the people, the women who even came before me that paved the way for all of us to have those opportunities. And I'm so thankful and so blessed and grateful that we're having this conversation today where we could still talk about the growth of the game and. Um, I can honestly say that without the sport, my life would be very different. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I just think it's, it's opened so many doors. Um, you know, growing up in Baltimore, playing with all the guys, the only female out there. I remember they all came one day outside and they said, hey, you can play in the WNBA one day. And I was like, what's that, WNBA? He was like, it's the NBA before the girls. <laughs> I was like, NBA before the girls? So that's when I went home and I, I started watching you, Cheryl, and, and, and watching them win championships. And, and I was just amazed. Like, there were women out there that were just like me. I didn't have to be ashamed to be tall. I could stand proud and, and, and be who I am. And that was the first time I watched a lot of women play sports on TV. I always just saw the men. Who knew? I never dreamed of being an Olympian. I never dreamed of being able to play in different countries. None of that ever crossed my mind. Just playing the sport has opened so many doors. And now we can inspire and we can advocate for political justice, you know, through our sport. So, you know, that's what it's all about. Lexi, do you, how, did, how did ball affect the trajectory of your life? And it's interesting because Angel brings up something that I, I resonate with and we're, you know, the same age, essentially. Um, I wasn't necessarily growing up to be a pro. Like, I, like that idea came <laughs> later. You are right. younger. You are younger, yeah. and the league had experienced a whole lot more success and longevity by the point by that time that you were coming to the game. How did you view the league and what was possible for you with basketball? I wanted to be a WNBA player when I was little, so mm -hmm. that's that's the amazing thing that um, you guys have been able to do for for players like me. You had built a league that we were able to look up to and want to get to. But basketball is something that I just love and. Like Cheryl and, and Angel said, the doors that it's opened um, have been incredible. And, and the voice that I've been given and other players in the league have been given uh, to speak up on things that normally we probably wouldn't be comfortable speaking on. One, because we wouldn't know much about it. Or two, we didn't think anybody would be listening. Um, so to be able to, to speak on things beyond this call for me is incredible. I'm honored. Um, so basketball has definitely changed my life. Cheryl, this one is for you. 
Um, you played in the inaugural WNBA season, 97, the league starts up. You guys with the, the Houston Comets won the first four championships of the, of the league's history. And in your earlier answer, you said, we don't necessarily talk enough about those, the, the beginning of the WNBA and even mm -hmm. the players who played before the WNBA was started. So let's take a moment to relive that. What was the public reception to the start of the WNBA. First thought was if the NBA is behind the WNBA, then it's going to be successful. Um, and I just remember all the marketing that the league put behind it, and it was year round. It wasn't just in, the, you know, during the season, it was year round. Um, the whole, what was it, we got next? Um, people were excited about it. And coming off of the success that the 96 Olympic team had, um, I think we have built a lot of fans and a lot of excitement, a lot of curiosity about can these women really play? And I think in that moment, Roz, we truly gained the respect of just people around the world of how good these women really can be. Has the growth and the reach of the league since then met your expectations? When I look at where the WNBA, WNBA is today, I, I would tell you a couple of things. I think the talent level, um, from top to bottom, I think the talent level is better than it was in the beginning. And what I mean by that is that you have teams that you don't know who's gonna win a championship from, from one year to the next. Um, not to say the talent wasn't good then, because it was, but the thing I would say does disappoint me a little is I think the league could and should do a lot more in marketing players. I, I know players are talking about how to use the platform in a meaningful way and how the how the WNBA can also support them in doing that. What are meaningful, non-superficial, non-performance ways that the WNBA can use this 2020 season to affect change facing racial inequalities and systemic racism in America? We can definitely use this sport as a tool um, I didn't agree with some NBA players who said, hey, this is a distraction, it's entertainment. No, we're here to unite. We use our basketball as a tool. We inspire. This is the time now to play and fight for the social injustice. We're definitely going to be, uh, we're definitely going to have our shirts on. Uh, I think we can use our interview platforms to speak up uh, for, for, look, Breonna Taylor, she was in Louisville. That's where I went to school. You know, right now we're advocating for that. You know what I mean? We can use this tool to fight against the social injustice. And this is the time now. I agree with everything that Angel just said. I think also I'm excited that, you know, I, although the bubble is not an ideal environment, we're also going to be in there together. So we'll be able to bounce ideas off of each other, share stories, share experiences with each other. I think that usually, you know, teams kind of do their own thing one by one by one because we're all in different cities. But I think we'll be able to, you know, have one united voice, really, because we're all going to be in the same place. And I think that us as players are going to have a lot of control of what is said and shared because we're going to be the only ones in there. I think it's every player's individual decision, right? If you think it's good for you to play, then you play. If it's not, then you don't. Because not only do we have this coronavirus pandemic and then we got the whole systemic racism, all that stuff going on, there's a lot going on in this country right now. And I think if players are going to play, then you make that decision and you play, but you have to have a plan in place. So is the NBA, WMA going back to play, is that a distraction? Um, it's probably a distraction for, for people who are already distracted anyway, right? And I agree with Angel, it's a, it's a moment for everybody to come together and say, all right, we have a huge platform and it's no secret the NBA and WNBA are predominantly black. So the thing I don't want to happen is for players to start playing again, and all of a sudden they're back in their space and their environment and forget about the real world. Because these issues and these problems that we have today are going to be around for many more years to come, if we at some point, and I say we as all of us as black people don't put our, foot, our feet down or put our foot down and say, listen, here are some of the changes that we want. Here are some things that has to happen. Here's where we need you to be on our side. I don't think players use their voice enough. And if players are saying, yeah, we want to play, 
I think it's a perfect time and perfect opportunity for players to take advantage of it and demand change. It, it's been too long. Mm -hmm. so, and, and, and I like what I see. You know, we have to support the millennials. They're the ones out there fighting. The millennials. Yes. Yes. Right? So they weren't there with Rodney King. They weren't there with Martin Luther King. They weren't there. They, they saw George Floyd and they were pissed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now that everybody's sitting down, they got to see, oh my God, America's really in a lot of trouble right now. So guess what? You see in France, you see in London, they're tearing down Confederate uh, statues. So we see things that we've never saw before. So some kind of change is happening, you know, but I think that we need to continue to use our platforms. Beyonce wrote a letter for Breonna Taylor. So we all need to use our celebrity now platforms to really get this done. I want to talk about Maya Moore. She left hoops in the prime of her career to fight for criminal justice reform. And it's such an honorable cause. It definitely felt like it happened so abruptly. Like all of a sudden Maya just didn't come back to hoops. And the coverage of this honorable cause, an abrupt moment in one of the biggest stars of the game ever, um, has been covered by the media here and there. And I'm wondering too if part of that is, you know, Maya's picking her spot selectively on who she talks to and when she talks. But I, I think we should be talking about Maya more, more. You know, I, I competed with nobody like I did with Maya Moore, ever. It's never gonna be the same. And I wish she was back, but I understand the road she's going. It's a road that needs more attention. I think that what she's on is amazing. For God's sakes, like, I don't think enough people know the story of what she's doing. And I think that Netflix or somebody needs to do a documentary on what she's doing off the court. Maya's a champion. Like, she she always has been, you know, and, and what she's doing now is not going to be any different. Um, everything that she brought to the court, all the passion, energy, drive, determination she had as a basketball player, she now has that in this cause. And I agree with Angel. I think somebody somewhere should, should be doing more coverage, should be talking more about um, what Maya is doing now instead of people talking about, oh my God, I can't believe Maya just left the game. Um, I mean, that's, that's her decision. You know, Maya, I think, gave everything that she had to give to the game um, and probably accomplished, if not everything, almost everything that she wanted to accomplish as a basketball player. I've always said, I, I feel like, you know, God puts us on this earth, this earth that we all have a purpose. And sometimes it takes some of us longer than others to find that purpose. And right. Maya, a lot like myself, I don't think it, her purpose was to be a basketball player. I think it was to use basketball as a platform to do bigger and better things. The passion she has right now in her heart is for something bigger and better than basketball. And where we are in this country as African-American men and women, um, I, I couldn't think of a better time for her right. to be doing what she's doing. And, you know, I got nothing but love for Maya, nothing but respect for her. I mean, I think the links have always been like at the forefront of, the, of these types of issues. Um, now, knowing what I know now, I see, you know, one of the main reasons why is because they had, you know, someone like Maya playing on the team and I'm sure she advocated for things like that. Um, you know, her, her last season was my first season. So up until that point, you know, I had just been a fan, a spectator of hers. And then obviously my first season, I was kind of a fan and a spectator. I don't think she's getting nearly as much attention as she should. I mean, you see what some of the NBA guys have been saying about what they're just talking about leaving. <laughs> they're not actually going to leave and leave all that money. That's all. That's how I feel about it. Maya actually did it. <laughs> Maya actually did it. Mm -hmm. She didn't announce it. She just did it. And nobody's saying anything. All the attention that these, uh, they have gotten for just saying, oh, we should just not do it and go help the community. Okay, hear you, go do it. Definitely, and to your point, Lexi, like what Maya did was brave. She, she, she didn't discuss it talk about it, you know, maybe do it. She left behind something that was wildly successful and comfortable for her. 
Um, I remember, you know, those Stanford UConn battles of our college days and then covering her in, uh, in the pros. Maya's an excellent woman at everything. So what I see her as she steps into this next phase as she fights for criminal justice reform, I see a woman that is still excellent. And Cheryl, you said, you know, her crusade is on time. That's, I, I, she was actually a little, she was early. A little early. Early. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The country just now yeah. is like, okay, let's, let's fix some things. Maya been right. doing years ago. I agree that her story needs to be uplifted even more than it has been. Because if a, someone, a player of her caliber on the men's side left, period, but left to do such a noble cause, I mean, everywhere. Oh my gosh. For, oh my it would God. be all over the place. For years. Yeah. It would right. be a movie by now. It would be a movie. This would absolutely be a, like if a person like LeBron yeah. not playing. Right. So it would definitely be a movie already. Maya, not like, even if it was a LeBron type caliber player. If it was just a normal player scored two sure. points a game on the bench in the NBA, it would be everywhere. So very true.